happen again. I want to bring in another voice to the conversation. Lizanne Saunders is the chief investment strategist at Charles Schwab, joining us on the phone once again. Lizanne, welcome back. It's nice to uh, talk to you today. Hi, guys. How are you? Good, thank you. Uh, what do you think about the correction? Has it, has it run its course? Is there more to go? It doesn't feel like it's run its course. Now, I'm not, I'm not a short-term trading-oriented person, although I will say that I agree with much of what Mike Wilson said. And that, that's been my view for much of this year. We, and we came into the year saying late cycle, we were going to see greater uh, chances of pullbacks and higher volatility. And I think that is now coming to fruition. I think that the, what sat behind this uh, correction was much less technical than what we saw in January and February. I thought that had much to do with not just the technicals of the short ball trade, but also sentiment that got really frothy. This time it's kind of real stuff. It's not only the breakout in yields, the, the dollar liquidity funding crisis, it's plaguing EMs, but the fact that we're actually putting meat on the bones now in terms of companies talking about the impact of, of tariffs. And I think what may be happening here is that we're in a topping process. And those, you know, tops tend to be processes, not moments in time like bottoms. What do you think is going to be the tell when, when you'll know um, that, it, that it's okay for Schwab clients, frankly, uh, to buy stocks? <clears throat> Um, I think in the short term, you know, in a topping process, you, you still get plenty of bounces. Uh, I'd like to see a bit more of a washout in uh, sentiment. There are some behavioral measures of sentiment. Some sentiment trader uh, has a smart money, dumb money set of confidence measures that does show a pretty wide gap now with smart money optimism, which is a non-contrarian indicator, um, up at fairly decent uh, levels. But anecdotally, I don't quite get a sense that we've, we've hit that washout point like we did in February. So I think you have to look at the technicals and, and sentiment. But unless we really see a change in the macro environment and stop seeing this second derivative deterioration in many of the important leading indicators, I think it would be more of a short-term opportunity, not a sign that you know we're off to the races again. I'm interesting. Uh, Mike Wilson, who's here, as you mentioned, uh, would like to ask you a question, Lizanne. And so uh, I just got a question. You said a topping process, but you know the MSCI All Country World's down 19 percent, and 40 to 50 percent of the stocks in the U.S. are already down 20 percent, with about 75 percent down 10. So, I mean, that that would argue that it's already topped. And the question is, you know, how much more downside then do you think there would be if that's not the top? What does the bottom look like? Well, I I think by topping process, I think we could be. Uh, at some point heading into an actual bear market. Uh, I think the, the risk of recession uh, in the next maybe year to year and a half is higher than what the consensus believes. Um, I think it could happen sooner, particularly if we continue to slide down the you know, slippery slope into the rabbit hole of a full-out trade war. You know, People talk about trade and tariffs not having an aggregate big impact on the economy, but if you add in the depending and proposed tariffs, you're talking about a full percent on GDP, in an environment where that's already slowing, but an environment where inflation is picking up. I think the character of the market is telling you we're in that stage of the cycle. The final stage being where both economic growth and inflation is deteriorating. You know, the Fed has to stop, which is usually then when a recession begins. So I think you're going to see signs of, of, of that come in the credit markets. We're starting to see a little bit of it, not much yet. So by topping, again, I don't think trying to define perfect tops and bottoms, but it wouldn't surprise me if a year from now or two years from now we look back and say, you know, the, the, the September of, uh, of 2018 was the peak in the bull market. Mm. Um, that's very interesting uh, to discuss. You want to you wanna weigh in on that? I mean, I'm interested to ask a question, which is, uh, Luzanne, that's a, I mean, if the typical risk of a recession is a one in five probability in any given year, which is 20 percent. Where do you put it, Lizanne, for next year or 2020? Well, I, you know, I don't, I don't keep a recession probability model. Uh, there are certainly quite a few of the, the regional feds have their own versions of models that tend to have a pretty hefty component of them associated with the yield curve. And if you look at, you know, the 10 to 3 month yield curve, it, it certainly provides a decent amount of runway between now and the next recession. So I, I don't think that, that it's, it's an imminent problem, but I think we could really start to see a haircut to GDP forecast if the trade war worsens from here and we start to see a more meaningful uh, impact. So 
I, you know, I, the New York Fed's recession probability model, I think, has it at about uh, 20%. Then you've got other more market-based indicators like Goldman's bull bear that's up, I think, at, you know, 60 or 70%. Um, I just think this notion that we have enough steam in the economy, given what we're seeing in uh, overseas economies, uh, is not going to carry us through and that we have to start to be mindful that you know, cycles have ends, and and I think this next cycle will be a more traditional stock market sniffs out a coming recession, mm. typically indicated by the yield curve and other measures, and we have a recession-related uh, bear market. This is why, you know, I've sort of been taking the position which I have. Um, when you listen to the PPGs, Floor, Ford, FedEx, Micron, CAT, 3M, Stanley Black and Decker, Costco, UTX, and there are others who talk about the damaging effects that tariffs are having. And this is day three of you um, Wasn't the evidence whipping me with this information, and I'm about ready to wilt here, Scott, okay. which is, uh, um, Don't you do know, all, all I know is this, Scott, I, I, I'll tell you where my thinking has come from, which is I was very concerned about these tariffs. We polled our economists on it. And they show Lizanne at the high end here with her 1% figure. The numbers we got were like a quarter point. And I was very surprised they were so low. Now, nothing ordains that these economists are going to be right about the estimate of this. They, they add it up, they take the price factor, and they put it in there. Maybe they're wrong, but it was hard now. Now, maybe what has to happen is these inputs from the companies need to be put into the economist model, but the initial forecasts got were relatively low. I guess right. maybe like, we well, need we to consider gonna, gonna take a, a quarter, much worse outcome take, from the trade. It was going to take, what, a quarter point? A quarter, quarter point, point off, off GDP. Of GDP. It was like, okay, you're going to get a quarter point from the, from the tax cut or a half a point. You get a quarter point off but from Steve, the thing, and it's all a watch. Here's the issue. You're looking at it much too analytically. <clears throat> Okay, the issue is... Should I look at it emotionally? Yes. No. You should look, <laughs> at, I'm you joking, should look at it... Yeah, I know. Joking. Steve, let's look at this as a teaching moment. Look at it directionally. So the market trades off direction. Directionally, the tax cut said the economy is going to go. Now we're seeing some hits to the economy as you're reflecting in all those companies. So the way I see it is that the positive momentum in sentiment or in, in euphoria has taken us to a level that we're now going to retreat from. We're in an extended bull market. We're in an extended mar uh, economic cycle. Yeah. Things revert to the mean, and that's what people lose sight of. So you get cut uh, caught up in all that, and you come out and say, okay, it's a quarter point. But here's what I tell you, that if there is any sort of agreement, the market's going to explode higher. At that point, I will sell maybe everything. Okay, But right. if it doesn't, you're going to have more companies come out. You're going to have bad things inflation be fair Liz Lizanne's one percent number comes off of all of the tariffs i think being and enacted Steve, right Steve, i was going to jump in and say that that's not just what's currently in place right, it right. the pending and the proposed where you get to the full you know north of half a of a trillion in in goods and you know up to the full 25 percent on what's been announced so far that's <clears> not where we are now that right. probably is more like a quarter percent on gdp but if we continue to go down this path and you take everything that is either pending right Agreed. now or proposed, go up to the maximum tariff rate on those, that's where you get the 1%. And that, to me, doesn't feel like a stretch. I so. talked to an administration official. I said, is the president aware of this stuff and, uh, and the negative effects on the economy? And the official said to me for about a half an hour a day. And the rest of the Why time, he's not. Why question? Because, so, because you would think a president that so badly wants to... Um, uh, 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 motivate and otherwise stimulate the corporate sector would understand how he's taking it away through the tariffs. He's I don't think place. this is all that complicated. You think the president has blamed the Fed. Yeah. Larry Kudlow the other day blamed the election that the market was sniffing out the, the Democrats taking the House and maybe that's why. Okay. It was down. I don't think it's any more complicated. It's not about Democrats, Republicans. It's yeah. about CEOs and CFOs okay. who become <clears throat> skittish, who have who who uh, anticipated some of this stuff mm -hmm. coming with tariffs. Right. Now and they have less visibility than they've had in many Steve months. Steve makes an excellent point about momentum. And by the way, I was the first guy to do this, which is I went back and looked at all the one percent moves in the Dow of the year up to about June or July, and like half of them were the result of trade, and there was never a positive move in stocks when it looked like there were going to be more tariffs. There were only positive moves in stocks when there would be fewer tariffs. So I'm going to 
Say goodbye. You say goodbye. Thank you for being here. And we'll here. come back I tomorrow. Like you can it was a good, great conversation. I'll change my trade get ready idea. ready for the tariff whip. When I, get, when I get better data, I'll change the tariff. The conversation's not you know? going away. Um, I do want to uh, continue. Uh, Lizanne, please stay with us. Uh, Mike Wilson, as well, is going to be here. Um, these earnings that are coming after the bell. Alphabet, Amazon, Intel. Lizanne, how important is, is tech to the overall market's health? Um, you know, I think you probably want to see at least some participation, but uh, we we downgraded tech from uh, overweight to, to neutral a couple of months ago and don't think it is going to represent any kind of leadership. So even if we have some sort of cyclical ride back up here, um, I, I think it's unlikely to be led by tech. It's more likely to be led by slightly more defensive areas, maybe healthcare being the one that also gives you a little bit of a growth component. So that gives you no chance then of, of hitting um, new highs, Mike Wilson. I mean, you got almost a third of the market is not going to resume its leadership role. How the heck is the overall market going to get back to those lofty levels? Well, I don't think it's going to hit a new high this year. I think it could hit a new high next year, even though you're still in the context of that you know, bear market that we've been talking about. So. I want to go back to something. I mean, we're all debating on whether we're going into a recession or not, but we're here talking about the market, right? That's what matters. And we're, in our job, we're trying to figure out, is the market going to anticipate? The market's already anticipated this, okay? The time to get more cautious was in January, not as the market's melting down, okay? So, like, that's the whole point, is that I think, I think people now are finally, the moment of recognition to the average market participant is now, when it was plainly obvious <laughs> to the market six, eight, ten months ago, which has been our narrative all along. Yeah, but, and, and so okay, we're pretty so, far along, Scott. That's the point, right? We've already done a lot of damage. So to tell people to worry about a bear market now isn't that helpful. No, right? but, but that's not helpful. That, I mean, it's not helpful, right? Because you're, you're going to get people selling at bad prices. The time to get people to lighten up was this summer and back in January, right, well, when prices were elevated, not now. But, Mike, that, it goes back to my question before. The market... The market advance this year was driven by FANG. It was driven by the technology stocks. And to Scott's point, the market's not going to go back up. We could see it today. The market's not going back up if these technology stocks are not going to participate once again. So, okay, I understand. We, we don't want to tell clients at this point that it's that's a bear market, sideways market. I happen to agree with you. I think the market goes a lot of different places and ultimately ends up back at the same place. But looking at that, is it a value market? Is it a defensive market? Is it a quality market? What types of stocks in that marketplace would you want to own? Yeah, so right now we're definitely defensively positioned. So not so much value versus growth, but defenses. We upgraded defensive securities in June and July when they were left for dead. So things like utilities and staples and even telecom services are having a little bit of a bid now. And those are the kinds of things that tend to work at the very end when people are just looking for safety. Uh, by the way, that will coincide, I think, with a rate top sometime in the next couple of weeks. Okay, that doesn't mean that that's not all you can own because that's not a big part of the market, obviously. Healthcare is a pretty big part of the market. That you I, I agree hold with you. In, and right? I added to Allergan, that stock got down 10% in a heartbeat. To me, it's defensive, no reason for it to sell. I think it's going to be a good quarter. And there are some tech stocks that have re rated now enough right. where they're looking attractive, like John was talking about. Things have happened. You should be looking at the sort of in the garbage dump now for what's been thrown away. And that could be across every sector. What I'm trying to get across today, this has been going on a lot longer than two weeks. Mm -hmm. right? And this is now we're getting sort of the capitulatory action, not just, by the way, from the market, but from people who talk about the market. It right? started in the emerging markets. What, right. what, what if it's just, it's just a growth scare, though? What if it's not going to be as bad as, as some people say? Well, let's talk about that. People this, have gotten yeah. too negative, maybe. First of all, even if we have a recession next year, first of all, we've been calling for an earnings recession next year for a while, right? We still feel highly confident about that. Maybe that leads to an economic recession, maybe it doesn't, but either way, it's going to be very mild. It's going to be very modest because we don't have the excesses in this economy the way we have historically particularly in the banking system, which is usually when it gets kind of you know, really squirrely. This is a secular bull market. We're going to have a very modest recession. Next one's going to be modest, and we're going to move forward, okay? The market has done a very good job of discounting that already, a good part of it. And you just got to be patient here, picking your stocks, because this is going to go on for a little while. And the, people, everybody hasn't recognized this yet. It's going to take a little more time. Okay, Lizanne, I'm going to give you the last word to react to what Mike Wilson said, because it certainly differs uh, from, from your wondering whether this is the beginning of a, a bear market and the end of, of one of the most amazing bull markets we've ever seen? Well, I think it could very likely be a cyclical bear market in an ongoing secular bull market. 
so I, I'm not definitively thinking that we've ended the cycle here. I also agree that there is a scenario whereby you have an earnings recession versus just an economic recession because we haven't had those excesses. You know, we had a four quarter in a row earnings recession in the second half of 2015 and the first half of 2016. It obviously didn't take the economy down with it. Now, the difference between then and what's likely to happen now is that was almost all due to the energy sector. Uh, and I, I think this time, if we get an earnings recession, it's likely to be a bit more broad based and has a greater potential than what happened in 15 and 16 of bringing the economy down with it. Yeah, Lizanne, but I agree that I think uh, I, I'm not worried about a deep recession like the last one. This is not a you know financial system collapse, bubble burst kind of environment. I think it would be more like your, your garden variety on the shorter end of the spectrum recession if we get one. I got you. We uh, will visit with you again soon, I hope. Thank you so much for being with us today. Lizanne Thanks, Saunders guys. of Charles Schwab, Mike Wilson, it's always a pleasure to get your thoughts as well. Thanks, it's a very thoughtful conversation.